I'm Alicia Hyatt, editor of Mining Markets Magazine, and I'm here at the PDAC with Brent Cook, editor of Exploration Insights. Brent, in January at the Cambridge Show, you gave a talk entitled, Brent's Feeling Good About 2015. Uh, we have seen a bit of a bounce in the market and the gold price. Why aren't you feeling better about this year? I'm, I'm surprised by the, uh, the bounce we've seen. You know, the gold miners are up 25%. The juniors, the GDXJ is up over 40% now. Gold's only up about 8%. And fundamentally, uh, I don't see that the, the issues we had before you know, this, this bounce came, have gone away. And that being that it's still, on average, all in sustaining costs for the majors uh, per ounce is more than they're actually selling it for. Uh, it's still just as hard, if not harder, to find new deposits. So those those issues still remain, despite all the optimism going on right now. So I'm a bit, a bit surprised. So you predicted, I think it was last year, that um, gold miners would react to the slump in the gold price by high grading their deposits and uh, downgrading reserves. That's happened. So what's next? Well, I think what we're going to see is that they need to prove to serious investors that they can actually make money. And the only way they can do that is cut costs. And the biggest cost they can cut is, is labor, exploration, and development and that's not really going to do it that's going to help but i think ultimately it's the high grading that's going to bump up their profitability and there's a lot of issues associated with that high grading so what you do when you're high graded deposit you pull the guts out of it say you pull the ore grading five grams a ton out of the middle of it and your remaining ore what was classified as ore now becomes uneconomic because it, it, the average grade of that drops below your cutoff grade so effectively although you pull say two million ounces out of the deposit, you might end up leaving a million ounces that was originally in your um, in your reserve statement. And that's sort of what they're doing when, with lowering their gold price uh, price deck uh, assumptions for determining reserves. And that's just a mathematical thing. But when you do it for real, there's serious implications. And what that means is ultimately they're not going to have enough ore moving into the future. And so 2015, I think, is when this is going to set in, and they're going to have to be out really acquiring the very few deposits that make money. So which companies do you see as takeover targets starting in 2015 then? Well, I think the mid-tiers that are actually making good money, someone like B2 Gold, uh, I think Fortuna Silver, Asenko I think is as a possibility there. Just companies like that are that are developing deposits that make good money. So you mentioned in Exploration Insights recently that uh, the gold, uh, major gold miners have a severely shrinking uh, production profile going forward um, in the future. What are the implications of that? Well, they're, they're really interesting for those of us in the junior sector because that's where we're really going to make our money. But consider every time, you know, every ounce that's mined has to be replaced or your business dies. And so they're not replacing their, their business, if you will. They're not their research and development arm isn't bringing in new ounces as fast as there's on the whole being produced. And so eventually they're going to have to go out and, and find these new deposits. The issue is that it's so much harder now. Once you do find, make a discovery, the timeline from discovery to production can be 10, 20 years. So it's not like you can just go buy something and put it in production. It's You've got to buy it and have it ready to go in production. And that's going to be even more hard. That's That's the real dilemma they face. Um, are the mid-tiers generally in better shape than the majors? It, on the whole, I would say yes, um, but it depends on what you mean by mid-tiers. I think you know the companies I mentioned before, B2, Fortuna, I throw Mandalay in with that. Their mid-tiers doing well, but that's because they've got good deposits and they know how to mine eff efficiently. But certainly there's a lot of mid-tiers that are just as bad a shape as a lot of the majors. You work as an advisor to a number of funds. Um, what are they thinking about gold right now and gold stocks? Well, I think the ones that I work in anyway, they're still fundamentally positive on the gold uh, gold price. They think it's going to be steady or going higher. Uh, they've been extremely frustrated by what's happened over the past you know, few years. I mean, I think I read today that the major mining companies have written off $60 billion just last year. That's rather frustrating to someone who wants to get into this business. But they're, the ones I'm working with have become much more educated in this sector and recognize the pitfalls. and they're investing a lot more selectively and I think they're going to do quite well. On Sunday, David Harquill of Franco Nevada gave a talk here um, saying that um, miners are, are to blame for their current situation because they've been catering to investors who want the wrong thing. Um, would you agree with that? Most definitely. That's a, a really good point. I missed his talk, but certainly 
the problem we face in this industry is that it's all about the market, right? What the market wants. That's that's BS. I think what it should be really about is a company making money. And that hasn't been the focus. It has been how many ounces can you accumulate? Um, how much can you how fast can you produce it? What are your cash costs? Um, that sort of thing instead of about making money. And I think, you know, people get so excited in this sector, ultimately it's their own fault because they're the broker's job and the financial banker's job is just to bring someone what they want as opposed to what they think they may need.